More than 2,600 people have died as Israel has pounded Gaza with strikes, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. Again, 2,600 people have been murdered in these air strikes, and that number continues to grow. As of right now, a child is murdered in Gaza every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, a child is murdered in these airstrikes. Now, Israeli forces said on Saturday that the past week of crippling airstrikes in Gaza could soon be followed by significant ground operations. And just to give some context to that, this weekend, Israeli forces shot a Israeli settler because they believed he was a member of Hamas. So if you're wondering how are these ground forces going to tell the difference between Hamas fighters and Palestinian uh, civilians, they won't. They couldn't even tell the difference between a Hamas fighter and an Israeli citizen. So if that sounds scary to you, it's because it should sound scary to you. Now, as I'm sure you're all aware of by now, there was also an evacuation order given to the residents of Gaza. According to Israel, half a million residents have left northern Gaza to head south. CNN reported that the IDF said Saturday it would allow people to move south for their own safety. They didn't exactly allow them to do that. We'll get into that in a bit. On specified streets of Gaza during a six hour window, but it was unclear how widely the messaging was received on the ground given the widespread electricity and internet blackout or how safe passage would be. So there are only two places in Gaza that people can evacuate the Rafah border crossing, which we have a picture we can or we can highlight that for you, which connects Gaza and Egypt and is the only passage not controlled by Israel and Rafah crossing, which is the southernmost part of uh, exit from Gaza and borders Egypt's Sinai Desert. Now, there are issues with this though, mainly that roads have been bombed. The border had previously been closed. So a little more from the Washington Post. The main road running north to south were crowded for a second day Saturday after the Israeli military announced a six hour window for civilians to move along designated streets to parts of Gaza south of the Wadi Gaza wetlands here. In some areas, traffic came to a standstill with trucks, buses, overpacked cars, and people on foot all crowding onto the same narrow roads to head south. As I mentioned earlier, it wasn't exactly true when the IDF said that they would allow safe passage of these Palestinian people because the roads and the travelers have been hit by airstrikes while trying to follow the evacuation order. Reports emerged Friday of a, sh a strike on cars packed with fleeing civilians. The Washington Post verified a graphic video of the aftermath recorded along Salah al-Din Road. Palestinian Health Ministry said 40 people were injured in the attack, uh, were taken to Al-Shifa Hospital. The IDF are, quote, not aware of such an event at this location. We did not fire. We will not cooperate with the manipulations of Hamas and Israeli military said in a statement. Of course, they denied it because what they would be admitting to if they didn't deny it is a blatant war crime. That The Washington Post also reported that U.S. officials said they negotiated a temporary opening at the Rafah border crossing between Gaza and Egypt for American citizens seeking to flee. But a Palestinian border authority spokesman uh, and witnesses in the area said the crossing remains closed. So we'll get a little bit more in a, to a little bit more in a minute on the evacuation of United States citizens in Gaza, although I, I would say I have serious reservations about the uh, care that the United States is going to execute and in, in bringing these individuals home when they didn't care at all when an American citizen, Shireen Abu Akleh, was murdered while reporting on the ground uh, by the IDF. No, no condemnation there, not a single tear shed by the members of the United States government. <laughs> it's just absurd, but... Um, uh, Senator Turner, the language around what's going on here has been so hard to listen to because what we are seeing, in my opinion, is a genocide of the Palestinian people, an attempt at ethnic cleansing, mass displacement, almost uh, a 
like one eighth of the population of Gaza has now been completely displaced. They have no home to return to if they're ever even allowed to return to the northern part of Gaza. And we're seeing politicians, we're seeing spokespeople for Joe Biden saying that people asking for a ceasefire are repugnant and disgraceful. It is Horror. And we just saw that the the, uh, the Secretary of the Treasury said there's enough money for two wars. This is disturbing, knowing the absolute devastation that's happening on the ground, the number of civilians on both sides that have been brutally murdered and the disproportionate power that the Israeli government holds to end this. We're not imploring them to uh, you know reach peace, to you know have a ceasefire. We are beating the drums of war and the civilians are being hit the hardest. Yeah, I sigh deeply. Um, troops are being sent, about 2,000. I just read uh, 2,000 American troops are going to be sent. Uh, this is a moment that humanity is on the line here. That's what this, and so if anybody, if you're wondering what side to choose, we should be choosing the side of humanity. The UN has come out, other groups have come out and, and said that this these are crimes against humanity. It's going against the rules of war. And I put that in air quotes too, because it's really asinine to think that there truly are any rules of war, but there is supposed to be some, uh, some, some dictates when it comes to this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And what is happening to the Palestinian people in the Gaza defies all the 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 rules of war at this time. You know, I was reading something that Dr. Robert Reich had put out, and it really hit me, uh, Ray, that I want to share with us. And he said, hate is corrosive. It consumes and devours those who practice it. History shows that where hate is normalized, its poison seeps into the subsoil of a culture. It gruesomely distorts societies. Brutality, fear, and distrust transform, transform, um, transform otherwise rational human beings into closed-minded fanatics. People no longer listen to the other side. They view them as threats and enemies. On and on. No, I can go on and on and on. This situation, we definitely need a ceasefire. That's mm -hmm. it. I mean, you got to have a ceasefire. Doctors are saying, nurses are saying, you know, medical personnel, humanitarian um, volunteers are saying that this is untenable and they can't even get help into the Gaza. Over 50% or at least 50% of the Palestinians in that region are under the age of 15. Mm -hmm. So riddle me this. They had nothing to do with Hamas being elected, a terrorist group. They, they have nothing to do with that. Right? Every time I see the pictures of them babies, either babies, either Israeli babies or Palestinian babies, I'm outraged by the whole thing. And so the only way to try to get back to some stasis is to have a cease fire. And the United States role in this is never going to be forgotten. And we are going to look back on this. I mean, this is almost one of the worst things I've seen in my lifetime. I've certainly studied a lot, you know, talked to my, 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 my parents and, and, you know, grandparents when they were still alive and other elders who have lived through some pretty tragic and deep times, but living through this kind of moment, it is disturbing in every single way. And retribution against Hamas cannot be to just take and kill or starve out mm -hmm. innocent Palestinians. And then the statement being made that the Palestinians should uprise against Hamas, that it somehow is their fault and they're being called animals. And, you know, Right, we ain't got we, this. Ain't we not doing a whole show on this? But it's very reminiscent of some other things mm -hmm. that have happened throughout human history. I will tell you that, and so no one should be okay with what is happening. And if you want to know what side you should be on, you should be on the side of humanity. Period. And the United States, ooh, we. And we should be the moral voice here. We should be pushing for humanity here. But that's not happening. And I'm, I've, I've been really happy to see all the protests for peace all across the United States, all across Europe. And, and it's gotten very little coverage here. But in Israel, yeah, in Israel, the people are protesting against yeah. ben Benjamin Netanyahu, the far oh, yeah. right wing government in Israel, demanding peace. The families of people who have that's been it. taking hostage, people whose 
children, people whose parents have been taken hostage are going on Israeli news and saying yeah. that my parents don't want this. My children wouldn't right. have wanted this. We need peace now, That's not right. to mention that they're indiscriminately bombing Gaza. How many hostages are going to be killed because there's no precision yeah. in what they're doing? Go and after Hamas, but don't do it to, and, and I forget, uh, Ray, I forget what, Kyle, I think it was Crystal and Kyle, I was listening to them. And a point that, that Kyle made was that special ops, mm -hmm. this, this, is a, this is a job for special ops so that you have very little collateral damage. And then the argument that Hamas is using Palestinians for shields. Now, they, they, they haven't proven that, that's number one. But number two, let's, let's go with the argument that they are. So does that then justify going in and doing this? If Hamas is doing wrong, you know, my grandmother used to say two wrongs don't make a right. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. even if that was the case, there is no justification for just indiscriminately going into the Gaza and just killing innocent people where over 50%. And you know what, right for me, I don't care if they grown or they children, but we just mm -hmm. put an especially on that when over 50% of that population is under the age of 15. And it's not gonna have a good end. You know, Marianne Williamson, who's running for president, and I appreciated much of what she had to say, but she said, you know, eye for eye don't work. Everybody's gonna be blind when this is all said and done. So right, you're right. There are a lot of Israelis who are standing up saying, we don't want this.